Bradley Metrock, CEO of Project Voice, This Week in Voice Daily. We're going to be talking about Amazon Alexa and accessibility. So Amazon has just released six new videos, about a minute to a minute and a half a piece that tell different stories related to how Alexa helps create accessibility and make the world more accessible for various types of people. These are fantastic. I've seen them all each once, so I haven't watched them a bunch. We're going to get into it. I'm going to react to each one of them, all six of them, as part of this reaction video. We'll call it a super reaction if you want. We're going to get right on into it. Hi, my name is Michelle, and I work in finance, and also um, I turn on the lights. I have a boyfriend. His name is Daniel. We we live in uh, downtown Chicago. It's, it's nice. Work can be stressful. Finance is sort of a fast-paced world where things are moving quickly, and at the same time, everything needs to be done yesterday. I sometimes forget what day it is because there's so much stuff Alexa. happening at work. A couple of things. First of all, the music, everything about it, it's 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 all working to to humanize Amazon and Alexa. This is what they want to do. This is what we've talked about. This, you know, the the mood about big tech in the United States is a hostile one. People are over big tech. And so everything that uh, a company like Amazon puts out there has to be soft. It has to be understanding and it has to be um uh gentle and that's what this is i think this is just some great content you're seeing and importantly it really does tell the story of how alexa is impacting real people i, I see it all the time uh, so there's nothing exaggerated about this i will point out one weird thing if you can see um it may be hard to do um with this bar running across but each of these videos has got the word sponsored on the bottom left during it. I don't exactly know what that means. It's not explained in the description of the video. That's kind of weird. Other than that, this is great. I'm going to, we'll continue. Work. Remind me I have physical therapy this Wednesday at 3 p.m. So I had a car accident when I was younger and became paralyzed from the chest down. So for me, you know, working in spreadsheets and, and Excel all day, it's, it's tough sometimes, you know, it's nice to unwind and, and unplug and Alexa can help, you know, turn on the show and she knows exactly where I left off, which is nice. Alexa's actually, she's there and she, need, you know, sometimes it's, it's comforting to know that she's there for me and can help, um, help me stay independent. This is a really important point. I talk in a lot of my presentations, almost all of my presentations that I give about voice and AI when I'm talking to groups about the fact that despite the fact that we live with such high-end technology and uh, we live in this so-called information age, we live lonely and isolated lives, which leads people to be depressed. And this concept that Alexa um, makes you feel like you're less alone and consequently, you're less depressed and you're, um, you have a more positive outlook on things. That's very real. And there's been studies that have shown that. It's, it's really interesting. Um, and uh, this, this, uh, this is here referencing that, so uh, very important. So very cool video. Um, I'm going to go directly into the next one. My name's Leah. I live in Chicago. I work as an actor and a teacher, mostly teaching kids and teens how to audition for commercials and TV. And uh, I'm queer and have an awesome girlfriend. I have no routine. Every day is a little... So, you know, obviously we don't need her sexuality. Amazon includes that here just to drive home the point um, that Alexa's for everybody. And from that standpoint, uh, it kind of makes sense. Um, but, uh, you know, Alexa's not just for, you know, when Alexa came out, uh, because Amazon Prime members tend to, they skew affluent, they skew educated. 
I remember at first, you know, four or five years ago, um, Alexa was a um, kind of a luxury item, you know, kind of um, uh, something that only the privileged among us would have. And um, Amazon's aware of that too. And they know that some of how they have to build Alexa's use, uh, you know, customer base basically um, will run in contrast, you know, contrary to the demographics that enjoy the other parts of Amazon's large business. That's what's going on here. We'll continue. A little different and I'm getting to do a lot of really cool different things and I enjoy all of those. But having ADHD, the really big one for me is the timers because I will actually just forget that I'm doing something. Remind me to meditate in 15 minutes. When our routine. My wife does this all the time. She sets timers all the time. She uses the Echo Show in the kitchen to do just this all the time. Set timers, set timers, set timers. Things are so up in the air right now. If I have one thing scheduled in a day, if I have one appointment, that is actually harder for me to remember and to get to than if I have a whole day stacked of appointments. So I'll usually be able to set an alarm just to make sure that I remember I'm where I need to be. <laughs> Without Alexa, I would probably have burned the kitchen down. That's a good one. So that's a good video. Um, you can see what they're doing. They're telling these different stories and it's it's punchy, it's short, and it works. These are good. We'll continue. So my name is Raji. I live in Chicago and I have my background in uh, broadcast journalism, but I actually got into art probably from a young age. And then I got a scholarship to go to college for art. This is something I love doing and it's a passion of mine. I love art. <laughs> My main gig is that I'm an actor model. I mean, for me, I personally love what I do and I have always felt like all the clients I've worked for really resonate with who I am. And so people with disabilities are so underrepresented in media. And so I think it's so awesome that there are so many more companies and brands that are using people with disabilities in their marketing and advertising. And it's so necessary because we really are a beautiful world. And so the advertising and marketing really needs to reflect the world we actually live in. <clears throat> It's interesting that that would be said in this video. Um, for the Alexa team, you could actually argue that the exact opposite is the case. Amazon has beat the drum hard for accessibility for years uh, with Alexa and uh, have really led with access, arguably have led with accessibility um, as a dominant Alexa use case to the detriment of more mainstream third-party Alexa skills and things that they could have been promoting and they didn't. So while what she's saying is true that people who are disabled or have different unique circumstances, it's a good thing for people to, to see themselves in the culture. Um, it's, I think to Amazon's credit that they, have been a leader in this area. Alexa is super helpful to me and that just when I'm in the house or, you know, wherever I am, I can just kind of use the voice commands and free up my hands so that it doesn't impede on the need for me to do other things like, you know, with my crutches. Any little bit of extra seconds or minutes we're able to get back in our day, that I think everybody could use. <laughs> So another good video there. Um, you know, these are doers. These are telling stories of doers. Um, it's interesting to sort of contemplate that too, because we all have these grand visions of AI serving us and uh, just, uh, uh, you know, uh, rendering possible lifestyles of laziness and uh, lavishness. And um, it's interesting.
just to realize this is our earliest AI helping us be more active and helping us do more, not have things done for us. Kind of interesting. I'm going to go on to the next one. I'm Tari. I'm a mom. That's seemingly my big descriptor these days. I have a six and a seven year old that are in kindergarten and second grade. And then I co-own a theater with that theater. I also do um, diversity trainings, which is uh, really fulfilling in these times. Like that. What's on my schedule today? Being a mom and having kids and running a business is already busy, but then when you throw in the components of virtual schooling, which we've had thrown to us this year, for me, it's constantly moving and constantly having alarms and reminders so that we don't forget the things. Uh, in our home, Alexa is my personal assistant and keeps us on time schedule. So it's very much sort of our timer personal assistant, but also our sort of media hub. Both of my kids have an Echo Dot kids, so we use those as well for them. You know, their lights come on at 6.30 with music, and they understand that then they have another alarm that goes off that's when they have to get out of bed and go brush teeth. So this is an interesting one. So, you know, these stories are couched as accessibility-oriented. And this really has much less to do with that and much more to do with um, Amazon getting out in front and attacking the idea that uh, they don't honor privacy, that they can't defend privacy, that privacy is somehow at odds with Alexa as a product or service. And um, even more so to such a degree that parents should be comfortable with Alexa uh, with their children. And uh, as we have seen uh, back in the days of the Alexa conference before it turned into Project Voice, sometimes that's the case and sometimes it's not. Interesting to see these video, this particular video uh, take on the subject. The other part of my life is that I have fibromyalgia and so sleep is incredibly important for me and it helps me sleep deeper. Both of my kids use it for deep sleep, so we wouldn't be sleeping. We would be nowhere on time. I would have to manage all the things that my kids can sort of use to help them get through. All right, so there's some of the explanation. So she has a condition. She's managing the condition. Uh, there are trade-offs to be made um, in uh, between accessibility and privacy and um, house management, what, whatever you would call what's going on here. You know, the, the management that a mom goes through for her children. Very interesting. And Alexa is the ultimate helper for that reason. Would you like to keep listening to Aussie and the egg? Yes. Okay, so that's that's a good one. Um, obviously, the production quality on all these is through the roof. Uh, Going to go on to the next one. Uh, so I work as a professional dancer and circus artist. Dancing has always been my greatest passion in life. Ever since my mom put me in ballet classes when I was four years old, the mood in my body has always been a huge part of myself. And then once everything shut down due to the pandemic, to lose that uh, was devastating to me. And then I, I told myself, well, okay, I, I need to stay in shape and I need to keep expressing myself during this time so that when the industry comes back, um, I'll be ready to go. And so, I don't know, like a creative process for me would just be standing up and just closing my eyes and feeling the ground with my toes and then trying to see like what I'm feeling today, you know? What I can use that I'm feeling today to like create a piece. That's when I start thinking of like a song to dance to. And then that's when Alexa comes in because I'm like, hey, Alexa, can you play that one song that goes like da da da? Or, oh, can you play uh, something happy for me? Whatever I'm feeling that day, whatever, I guess my limbs start moving to, and then. 
<clears throat> so this is touching on some functionality with Alexa that many people don't know about. And that's that, yes, you can ask Alexa to play a song and that's a dominant use case. Uh, tons of people, that's maybe all they do is they say Alexa play this song or that song and maybe they link it to an account uh, with Spotify or Amazon Music or whatever the case is. But you can ask Alexa to play an acoustic version of a song. You can ask Alexa to play a song that fits a vibe. You can add, you can uh, sing some melody and it will try to match up a song or say some lyrics and try to match to the song you're referring to. It's way more robust. Uh, Alexa is way more robust um, as a music discovery and playing service than the majority, 99% of people realize. Adding the music on top of that. Alexa has really helped me to like fill the space up with music and help me pretend that I'm back on stage performing again. It's an interesting one. And I'll point out here as well, this individual, uh, you know, the young, I don't know, I'll get in trouble by guessing her age. Uh, I'll just leave it at young. Um, young woman, um, artistically inclined, free spirited. This is exactly the type of person that you would imagine maybe having a problem with Amazon. Uh, having a problem with big tech, having a problem with Alexa, overreaching, surveillance, et cetera, et cetera. And they're showing her. So again, Amazon getting out in front of some of these narratives uh, while they also just simply state some use cases, it's a good thing. We'll go to our last one. This is the last one of the six videos. The energy dashboard is really easy to use and to get to. On the app, just navigate to devices and then scroll right until you see. Never mind. They just uploaded a new video. I wasn't even ready for it. Okay, so never mind. The six videos here. Hi, my name is Michelle, and I work in finance, and also um, I turn on the lights. I have a boyfriend, his name is Daniel. We... Oh, now I see the video I skipped. Here it is. Here is the sixth video. So my name is Chris Jekyll. Uh, I work in aerospace. I'm an attorney by training. I care a lot about uh, diversity and inclusion, inclusive design. And uh, my passion is partner acrobatics. You know, partner acrobatics and some folks call it. So this was the first of these accessibility videos I watched. And I'm not entirely sure what this guy is doing. <laughs> it's called acro yoga, but it had my attention. Call it acro yoga is what I have found to be so to be so liberating with it uh, is that you don't necessarily need eyesight. Um, a lot of it is feeling somebody's weight and or movement through your limbs, your body, your center of gravity, and I just feel free. And I. I I chase that feeling as much as I can. And there are flyers out there who trust their lives in my hands. Uh, it's an honor, it really. Alexa, can you resume my audible? In my life, I used to spend a lot of time not just needing help to shop, grocery shop, clothing shop, technology shopping, whatever it is. I used to spend time trying to find people to help me shop. If you had, uh, you know, you're blind or you got a visual impairment, you need to depend on someone to go shopping with you. And now you have this device that gives power back to the consumer, i.e. the blind consumer. It makes a blind person more independent, which is key. <clears throat> really interesting here where he's talking to an Alexa enabled microwave. Um, 
as part of this accessibility story. That's interesting. You know, when I give presentations on voice, I talk about Alexa, what am I holding? And if you look at Amazon's website about Alexa and accessibility, it properly talks quite a bit about Alexa, what am I holding? Alexa, what am I holding is a, a feature of Alexa devices that have a front facing camera, like an Echo Show. And um, you hold up a product um, and uh, say, Alexa, what am I holding? And if it has a barcode, it will scan it and tell you what you're holding and uh, you can order it um, right then and there. And uh, it's uh, transformative for low vision, no vision folks. Uh, it alone is a reason why a lot of people have bought these devices. It's amazing. Alexa is, uh, it's, it's a big deal uh, for people who can't see. Um, you know, I, I don't want to use terms like game changer or anything, but it's it's a big deal. <clears throat> this one's probably my favorite, just with this metaphor of um, it's a blind person. The, the this metaphor of um, symbiosis with. The device. Uh, this whole thing is about this guy doing this partner yoga um, that, uh, in, in, as he said, involves a whole lot of trust with the partner, um, as well as just physical acumen, you know, the ability to do it, uh, the physical characteristics. Um, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that the 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 metaphor for Alexa as well that it can complement you it can serve you it can balance you out it can support you uh, much in the same way so this collectively are the six videos that Amazon published for these accessibility stories it's great content uh, just happened to catch it uh, it will be interesting to see how they promote it moving forward it's really really good. Um, it tells very necessary stories, uh, definitely worth mentioning uh, here on the channel for This Week in Voice Daily. Thank you for watching, and until next time.